We are Ham Radio. Good morning, everybody. It's Freddie Mac, your Ham Radio Crusader, and it is cold in Oklahoma. Whew. Oh, it could be worse. I could live in Minnesota or someplace, but man, it's chilly this morning. Many of you probably seen my recent video of me putting uh, my Ham Radio Crusader logo on my Anytone AT878 UV Plus. You know, you can do this too. And why not? I'm gonna show you how. Let's get on over there. Okay, so just to preface this whole little project, this is my Anytone AT878 UV Plus. This is like their first generation of the 878. And this one has GPS and Bluetooth, but that really doesn't matter for this little function. So just so we're all clear, when we turn off the radio, and we turn it back on, you can set a custom boot screen or a boot message. I chose a boot screen logo. The Ham Radio Crusader emblem. So how did I get it on there? Well, let me show you. It took me a little bit to figure this out, but you know, if you know anything about uh, computers and images and things like that, it would have been a breeze for you, but I had to do a little study and not much, but that's what this video is here to help out with. So let's go over to the computer and take a look. And another note, just so we're all clear, if you notice, my background screen is just a little bit different. See the background colors? It's a little bit different in here. I have some more that are more drastic, but uh, we may just change a few of those as well, just to let you know how to customize your radio a little bit. Okay. Let's try that out. This is the Bridgecom website. I'll be putting a link down in the description. I am at the Anytone 878 version 1 model because that's the model that I have. Uh, there's the version 2 model which is commonly known as the Anytone 878 UV2. But I have the UV Plus which is second revision or third revision of the first generation of the 878. And I'm at the CPS firmware and driver downloads page for the model of my radio, the 878 version 1 model. And the current version that I have on my walkie, I believe, is 3.01. So we'll check that real quick because I didn't realize there was a 3.02 out already. And the way you can check on yours is to go to menu, then to settings, then to device info, and then scroll down. It'll say firmware version and mine is 3.02 N. I forgot that's the version that I have. And there's a radio data and a hardware version there. But what you're most worried about seeing is one that says firmware version and mine's 3.02 and the small letter N. Okay. So since I don't have that on this computer, we're going to click that and we're going to download it. And I'm going to put it up here in the downloads folder and save it and let it download. I put the downloaded file, the zip file, in a directory of its own and we're going to extract it. I use WinRAR a lot. You're welcome to use whatever extractor pro program you normally utilize and I put it all there. As you can see it created a folder here. Double click that and you have a series of subfolders. These are all important. A read first update instructions is here and if you want to do a firmware upgrade this will walk you through that. This video is not about that but maybe we'll have one in the very near future maybe at the very next revision. What I'm more worried about showing you for this is number one the CPS. You've got to have it installed. Let it do its thing. We've got the 3.02 version and we're going to create a desktop shortcut and we're going to install it. We're not going to launch it just yet, but we'll get there in a minute. Let's go back a, a tick here and go to D878UV screens. If you click this, you get a series of images that can be used to as boot screens or as background screens for your desktop. This one right here 
is used as a boot screen. It's visually stimulating when you turn on your 878 and it looks as if it's starting a service and booting up. It's not really anything more than just a display, a boot screen display. So this is what inspired me to figure out, hey, I wonder if I could replace that with my logo. So if you hover over the screen here, it tells you the dimensions are 160 by 128 and that it's a BMP file, a bitmap. And its size is relatively small, 21 kilobytes. I want to right click on that and go to properties. And I wanted to look at the details because there's a few things you need to know. The dimensions have to be 160 by 128 and the bit depth has to be 8. That's awful low, but you can do it. And it has to be in a bitmap file format. So this took a little doing, but you know, after a while, it really wasn't that hard. So let me get one of my logos out here. We're gonna do this from scratch. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is resize the image. And the website that I chose to do this is Image Resizer. You can use software, you can do whatever you want. This is just the one that I chose. So I hit uh, select image there, and now you just gotta navigate to wherever you saved your file. I put mine under the screens folder here and there it is large and it's PNG. And I hit open. Well, I better select it first and hit open. And put in your dimensions here. 160 by uncheck the lock aspect ratio. 160 by 128. And I chose the background fill is by is black by default, which was more than fine with me. And I left the uh, everything else the same. Hit resize image, and then download it. So we're going to call this HRC small, but we're going to change it to we're going to leave it at ping for now. PNG. Hit save. And then I'm going to go to where that file is at now. And here is the file we just made. And if you hit properties, go to details, you can see it's now a it's now a bit depth bit depth of eight, but it's a PNG file, so we know we need to make it a BMP file. So we can open it with paint. Go to file save as BMP and we're going to change that BMP to 256 color bitmap hit save color quality might be reduced okay and we'll go back to the file and we have our new one here HRC small dot bitmap hit properties we'll double check our work 160 by 128 and it's a bit depth of 8 so now that we've got our image the way we want it, and my radio already has that image on it, we're gonna choose a different image for this exercise. Okay, we're going to grab this new image. Hey, I wonder what we're gonna do with this. Okay, so we're gonna make it 160 by 128. Make sure you unlock, uncheck that lock aspect ratio Gonna fill the background. Let's resize that image. Let's download it. Just so we'll know which one it is, we'll call it resized as well. I don't think we can save it as a, no. So let's hit save. We'll navigate to where that is at. And there's the resized one. So let's open it with paint and we will save as a BMP picture. We're going to change this 24-bit to 256. Hit save. Hey, your color quality is going to be reduced. Yeah, we know. And that is saved. So now we've got it not only resized, but now it's a bitmap. So let's hit properties, double check our work. 
details 160 by 128 bit depth of 8 so this should work just fine so now what we're gonna do is open our programming software that we got from BridgeCom and we will take our programming cable you know how to program your anytone you don't really need to see this part I'm gonna plug in my programming cable and we're gonna turn the walkie on I like to go to control panel myself I like to go to the control panel and then the device manager and look at under my ports and there's my USB serial device which is my radio and it's COM5 so let's reopen my software we're gonna set our port for COM5 hit OK now we're gonna come up here to tool and we're going to do a boot image. I'm going to click on that and we'll hit open image and we're going to navigate to the location where we saved those screens. And as you see it's only going to see bitmaps and JPEGs. So there's our HR20 resized bitmap. We're going to select that we're going to hit OK. And the, if the picture displays here, you're halfway home. If it doesn't display there or it looks really stupid, then you're going to have to try again. The next step is to hit write. This will be written to the radio boot image. Continue. OK. And boom. It writes it to the radio. Write data completed. Hit OK. X this out. Now, your radio will reboot wait for it to boot back up because you've got to read it and make a change if the setting is not already to this setting so you're going to want to make sure your com port still holds and it does and we're going to read from the radio and i'm not going to check the digital contact list or we'll be here for about six minutes because i have about just under 200,000 contacts in there because i do dmr a lot so I'm going to leave, leave it checked as other data. This one's unchecked. Hit OK. And let's read the radio. Read data complete. Your radio will reboot. And we're going to come over here to optional setting. And hit the power on tab. And right here where it says power on interface, you have three choices. The default interface, custom characters, which is what you type in right here. Or custom picture which is the one that you've uploaded you can do other things here as well but this is all we're concerned with in this video we're going to hit OK and we're going to write that data to the radio now I've already saved mine so well what the heck we'll just write it again As you can see here, the radio's booting up and Ham Radio 2.0 logo right there on the screen. Hey, how nifty is that? And don't let it stop you there. There are many, many others. You could also do coffee and ham radios, ham radio clubhouse, and yours truly. <laughs> how great is this, huh? Well, have fun with it, y'all. Now that we've mastered putting the boot image on, how do you change those background screens? Well, it's just about as easy, maybe even easier. So if you come up here to Tool and you hit Standby BK Picture 1 or Picture 2, that BK stands for Background, I assume, because you can upload two. I don't know what the second one's for, but hey, whatever it is, whatever. We're going to open an image, and in that same D878 screens folder, every firmware upgrade now comes with a screens folder, you can choose any of these backgrounds. Now, these are the pictures that I've been playing with today, but let's say we want to do this tricolor job down here we're just going to select that it's called made of plastic bmp that one's called lipstick interesting okay we're going to go with this one and hit open it says open picture okay and it displays here and we're going to write it will be written to the radio standby picture continued you've seen what my screen looked like before 
So we're going to write this one to the radio. And then we're going to X out this screen. Now we've got to make some changes. Your radio will reboot. And you've got to wait for that to finish. And then we're going to go back to, I believe it's optional setting. And then you're going to go to the display tab. And come down here to where it says standby BK picture. I chose custom 2 for this one, but we're going to choose custom 1 because that's what we put it under. We're going to hit OK and we're going to write this to the radio and not check the digital contact list. Just hit other data, hit OK. Let it write. Write data completed. The radio will reboot. There's that beautiful Ham Radio Crusader logo. And look at that screen. Isn't that snazzy? <laughs> We've got some beautiful colors in our screen now. So let's try one more before we give up. Let's go to Tool. Let's just change Standby BK Picture 2. Let's open an image and let's choose something radical. There's one with an uh, Anytone A in the background. This one kind of looks Star Trekky. That one's that one's very blue. It's called Green, Blue, and Red for green, blue, and red buttons, I guess. Let's choose the glossy two. Let's see what that does. It opened the picture. Let's write it to the radio. And we're going to come over to, well, the radio will reboot again. It has to verify that it's still in there, I reckon. We're going to go to Optional Settings, Display, Standby BK Picture. Instead of Custom 1, we're going to change that to Custom 2. Hit OK. And not checking the digital contact list, just other data. Hit OK. Let it write to the radio. And the radio is writing the data to the radio. And now it will reboot. Beautiful Ham Radio Crusader logo. And there's that new background we just put in. You can see the A in the background and the new style of buttons, the glossy whatever it looked like. But it's very visible and it's very unique and custom to you. The Anytone people make these radios very customizable. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how that is done. Customize your Anytone AT878 UV Plus or UV2 or UV UV. I don't know. <laughs> I'm just glad that I like customization. I like to make things mine, but I don't dislike looking like others. It's just, I like just to be a little unique in this world. And I know all of y'all do too. So if you want to customize your AT878, UV2, UV+, UV, UV, <laughs> follow the steps in this video and have a little fun with it. Meanwhile, we'll be back later with uh, when the new firmware upgrade comes out, and we'll cover that as well in detail. So, meanwhile, this is Freddie Mac, your ham radio crusader, saying 73s, wishing all the good signals to be yours, and ham on, y'all! Ha <laughs> ha!